If you're on booktube, you definitely know my best friend Haley Pham. Well, when I was too broke to pay rent, she let me move in with her and during that time I thought this is a perfect time to get back into reading because I had access to her giant collection of books. And since she's my best friend and a booktuber, I thought why not read Haley Pham's five star books and see if our tastes align. Reading's a big part of her life and I want to understand the worlds she enters into. So let's get into it. Book number one, The Seven Year Slip. Ah, takes place in New York. It's already a hit for me. What a cute line. If a restaurant could romance, I was utterly enchanted. reading the epilogue and then we're done with this book. Like, ah, uh, it's such a good ending. Also, the main woman is named Clementine and her nickname is so cute. It's Lemon. Oh, it's such a good ending. Ah! This book. I've allowed this to marinate for the last week and a half. The scenery described in this book is the best I've read truly in years. Clementine is the main character and whether she was sitting in a restaurant or going up to her apartment on the Upper East Side or sitting at the Met, we've truly felt that the descriptions provided of where she was enthralled you into the same location. I love how yes it's a romance novel but there's so much more to it. Clementine is in her late 20s and she lives on the Upper East Side because her late aunt left her the apartment but she does not have the finances to keep up with life in New York and she is in this career that she thought she always dreamed of but wasn't what she really wanted and has all these big life things going on and you're entered into this world into her world. It doesn't just feel like you're entering her romance life, but her entire life. And I didn't want to rush through it. It was such a great read. My overall rating is a 4.5. Not the beginning of the book, but towards the beginning middle of the book, maybe pages 80 to 100. I did not want to read anymore. I was kind of bored. Once I left that beginning middle slump, I did not want to put this book down and I've been trying to fix my sleep schedule but once I got into this book I couldn't fix it anymore. I was going to bed really late just to read more chapters. On a personal note, I don't want to read books that have smut in it so there's about one to two spicy scenes in this book. I would still recommend this book to people but I would leave that warning because to each their own obviously but personally I don't want to read books that have any spice whatsoever in it. Obviously romance being my favorite genre is difficult to come across books that don't have any spice but this one was super less in comparison to other books. Last thing I want to say I, there is zero explanation for how the apartment goes into the past seven years and aside from the apartment doing that there is zero magical element to this book. Obviously that's a huge thing that the apartment transports you back seven years in the past, but there's no explanation for it. It's just what the apartment does. On to the next. And what's it gonna be? This is what it's gonna be. When I think of Haley Fam, I think of this book. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I tried to read this a year and a half ago and it did not go well because I thought it was so cheesy and so high school. So Book number two, let's get it. It is crazy how much this book has grown on me from when I first started reading it to now. Like, I'm gonna be so honest. I was not understanding how much, not just Haley, but so many of my friends hyped this book up to me and everyone was agreeing that this is a five star and I was genuinely confused. And now I'm getting it. It is so sweet. It's so wholesome. It's just a feel good book, but there are elements of real life to it as well. The main character is dealing with grief and transition and all these other things. I'm gonna read. I have my I Heart New York pants on, so it's a cozy night. I have my castor oil pack on. I just plugged in my heating pad. I'm trying to go to bed earlier and it's 10, it's 10 40 p.m. I could fall asleep by midnight-ish and that's a good plan for me. Okay, also every single chapter starts with a quote from a rom-com. Chapter 11's is, if you look for it, I've got a sneaky feeling you'll find that love actually is all around from love actually. I 
think I have one chapter left of this book. It, <laughs> I'm so excited for the ending. Like it's obviously gonna be so wholesome, but oh, I have more than one chapter for sure. I'm on chapter 16, page 323. You know you're enjoying a book when you are excited for the end of the day, when you know you're gonna go lay in bed and read and not scroll. Like that is a huge night and day change to a usual scrolling routine of mine, but I literally prefer to read this book at night. It's so fun. Let me just read you a little line that made me excited because it's one of my favorite songs. I really had fallen hard for him, hadn't I? I stared at them, the picture-perfect couple, as Taylor Swift made my soul ache. Please don't ever become a stranger whose laugh I could recognize anywhere. The scene is set. New Year's Day is playing. There's a prom happening. Time to finish this book. Uh, it's so cute. I'm on the epilogue now. I'm gonna throw up. Oh, it's so- that was so good. I'm so excited to give you guys my review of this book. First and foremost, this is a five-star read. Okay, I know this is a book, but I've never read the book. The movie To All the Boys I've Loved Before on Netflix by Jenny Han. The way that it is so cheesy, but if you just decide to embrace the cheesiness, it is such a good movie. That's how I feel about Better Than the Movies. The reason I was so apprehensive to read it the second time was because the first time I read it, I was so turned off by the cheesiness. Now that I've fully decided to embrace the high school enemies to lovers coming of age world that I'm entering into when I start reading this book. It is a five star read. It is so lighthearted. It is so cute and it's one of those books you can turn your brain off and just enjoy. I find the main girl character Liz to be a bit annoying. Sorry, I have to speak my truth on that. She bothers me, but, but Wes is probably my favorite male character in a romance book I've ever read. I love him so much. He's loyal, dependable. All of the words that you should be describing a man with is Wes. Side character, Liz's stepmom, Helena. Helena. She's described in the book one time as having the same kind of energy as Lorelai Gilmore. Every time she would be in a scene, I could not stop picturing her as Lorelai Gilmore. Oh, I feel like she's the underdog of this book. No one talks about her, but Helena, Helena, she's such a great character. Lastly, huge lesson in this book and in all of the books I've realized and in life is this communication is horrible. <sighs> so on to the next. I think I'm just gonna have Haley pick the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm actually crying now. Third book starting today. <laughs> My question for you. Okay. What makes a five star a five star? Because as we can see behind me, <laughs> you read a lot. <laughs> I feel like I'm pretty generous when it comes to five stars though. Like I just love a good book. Mm -hmm. But also a big thing is how long I remember the characters and think about them. Mm -hmm. And that's why this book, at the time that I read it, it was like a four or 4.5 but I continue to think about them for over a year now. And I miss them, Aww. and I want to read it again, and that's when you know. What's that saying? Sure a sure fire. A sure sell, a sure tell sign. <laughs> a sure tell sign? Is that the saying? A sure, basically like you can know for a fact that this is a five star if you would read it again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Something that's almost a five star, a 4.75. What's that missing, 0.25? It never gave me the heart clench. It's like knowing with your mind Ooh, mm -hmm. objectively, but you didn't feel it in your heart. Mm -hmm. And you can't control it. that. Yeah. It just happens. Yeah. So that's actually really helpful because I feel like the two I've read so far in my brain, I haven't been able to differentiate or determine 4.5, 4.75, or a 5. And I think after you saying that, I've decided what better than the movies is. What is it? Well, I'm going to tell you all of them at the oh, end. Oh, okay. <laughs> Friends that read together. Stay together. <laughs> First page. <laughs> a little tiny bug just flew past me. You know when you start a book, you're like just trying to like enter the world. Right. So I was trying to do that and I just hear the motion of you going like this, but I didn't know why. Let's see where I am in this book. I'm on page 68 right now, so I have quite a bit of reading to do. 
how would I explain this? Basically, this story so far follows two characters, Sadie Green and a boy named Sam, and it goes between the past when they met as preteens, the present, which they're both in college at Harvard and MIT, and the future, probably 10 years post-college, 10-15 years post-college. That's like very easy to follow for the most part. You can understand what part where they are, what part of the story. Essentially, they're both gamers. That's how they become friends as preteens from gaming. They share just a very special connection and there's a falling out that happens as preteens and then basically the present day is they run into each other in the subway and Sam, the boy, yells for Sadie and basically they reconnect from then. It's very much a book that your brain has to be turned on for, so this is not a rom-com vibe at all. But it's really good. I just feel like every time I want to read, it's at night, and I just can't turn my brain on enough to read this at night, especially quickly. I tend to enjoy reading books fast, but it's a little harder to do with this book, which is good. It's growing my brain. I'm gonna go to a coffee shop right now for about an hour and a half to read, see how much I can get done. on page 189. There's about 400 pages, so I'm basically halfway. This book has taken me a while to read, but I'm really into it now, and I want to keep reading. Why is it such a fun feeling to see the book that you're reading on the shelf? You just feel a little bit of like, yeah, I'm reading that book. I know what's happening in that world. <laughs> and then you think about how there's hundreds and thousands and millions of books out there, and they all have their own world, and we can't enter all of them because there's too many. Anyway, Really enjoying this adventurous fiction, literary fiction. I also googled it and apparently the rights to make it a movie have been purchased and the author is writing the screenplay. This would be such an insane movie. I'm like longing for that to come out. For the last couple of days, unless I'm sitting at a coffee shop, I have not touched this book unless it's after 11 p.m. I'm on page 250. I feel like a mixed person would genuinely feel like seen by some parts of this book. Sam is half Asian, half Jewish. I need to find the line because I'm gonna put it on the screen. It just feels like these really heavy topics or thoughts that go through the main character's mind get described in such a way that you feel like you are inside their mind. Personally, I feel like I've related to different parts of this book. Sam has a pretty severe disability. I have an autoimmune disease. I think doctors, someone coined the term like invisible disease for autoimmune diseases because oftentimes so many symptoms of autoimmune disease are invisible. And unless I tell you that, you don't know that I'm constantly in pain. This line from the book got me. Sometimes I would be in so much pain, the only thing that that kept me from wanting to die was the fact that I could leave my body and be in a body that worked perfectly for a while. Better than perfectly, actually, with a set of problems that were not my own. That description of how it feels like to be in a sick body where your body almost feels foreign to you and comparing that to why Sam loved to escape into video games, it makes so much sense. Sometimes reality, when you're in a sick body, genuinely is so painful that it feels better to compartmentalize your own human experience for a minute while you enter a different world. So for Sam that was video games and then for me like I guess that would be scrolling. <laughs> I just find so many quotes and things in this book that truly have me stop and think. So I'm excited to read the last basically 170 pages. I'm really hopeful to be done by tomorrow night. I do this thing where I get hyper fixated on finishing the book I'm reading and I just have been only reading at night and I wanted to be done with this book so bad so pff, I read like 150 pages tonight and I'm on the last two pages so let's finish this book. Wait I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Oh my gosh, wait. It is 2.45 in the morning, so I'm going to wait until tomorrow to give my review and my thoughts because I need this to simmer. I had the thought to just not even finish the book because I got over it, 
And that ending just put a pretty bow on this whole book for me. Oh, why did I actually get a tear in my eye? Good night. It's been a couple days since I finished tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I got asked so many times in public and then by my boyfriend friends, like, what what's the book about? And truly, it's still so difficult for me to articulate it into words because at its core, it's about two friends that make video games together. But this is about so much more than that. I'm debating between a 3.75 and a 4 out of 5. I think I'm leaning towards 4, but whatever number is right here is what I've decided. I felt like I was reading this book for years. That's a little bit dramatic, but it took so long to get through and you're not just entering the two main characters world, you're entering the third business partner's world, the grandparents world, the parents world. You enter into different time periods. It's just crazy. You also enter into the video game world as well. Honestly, a great word for this book is it's fascinating. There is so much precision to detail and honestly, this author, like I truly applaud her. This is an insanely well put together book. Truly, I think every trigger warning that a book could need probably gets covered in this. You can look them up probably on Goodreads. I feel like if I told you all the trigger warnings, I would fail to express them all. There's so much happening in this book. It feels like you are watching a movie. I would say for Spice, there are quite a few spicy scenes or language surrounding it. However, this isn't the type of Spice that you read in a romance book. This is almost like things are described, but they're not expanded on, if that makes sense. I did shed a tear at the end scene. On to the next. Even based on the covers, like these are just such different genres. I'm so excited to read something like this. Okay, my hair is brown on top. Currently I'm on chapter six, which is page 57 and there's 320 pages and I want to be done with the book today. Is that possible? I don't know. I plan on reading for one hour straight and seeing how many pages I can read in an hour because I'm genuinely just curious. Let's read. Uh, okay, my eyes kind of hurt from reading for an hour. They need to adjust to not looking at a book right now. I started on chapter six. I got to chapter 13, got to page 125. Okay, I read 68 pages in an hour. I feel like that's great speed. I would basically need to read for three more hours to finish this book today. And that would be being done around 530 if I didn't stop. And I don't want to do that to be honest. A common theme among the books that I've read between the seven year slip, having a dead aunt, better than the movies, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, and this book, all the main characters have a deceased mom. And I'm realizing that is such a trend in books and in movies. I don't really know why, but interesting to note. My hair is brown, why is it kind of sending me? Something I'm eating up about this book is it takes place in March and it's currently March. And I just like when my current life, the calendar date matches up with the book I'm reading. There's also a part that this is just so girl when you have a crush on someone and I thought it was so cute. Once I'd given in saying that she'd go on a date with this guy, I planned our wedding the whole way home. <laughs> And of course, once you started dating someone, you inevitably got married. So we were essentially engaged. Where to have the wedding? Maybe on the coastal rocks of Maine. Like, that's just so girl brain. When you have a crush on someone, it's so funny. I'm really enjoying the lightheartedness of this book. I feel like I catch myself chuckling. <laughs> I just finished Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. Upon initial reaction to finishing, I feel like I want to rate it a 4.75. I mean, why wouldn't I give it a five star? Honestly, this is a five star read. My only hesitation with giving it that is I prefer a slower burn romance and I feel like this isn't slow burn. The way you watch How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days is not how you're going into watching Interstellar. So if you go into reading a book like Hello Stranger the way you would with watching a rom-com, it's a five star read. It has every element to make a great love romance novel. I'm obsessed. I think the cover is so cute too. This was such an easy book to get through. I literally stayed up till five in the morning last night reading because I didn't want to stop because I liked the book so much and I finished today. Basically, Sadie is the main character. She is a portrait artist. She has no money really and puts up this front for her 
father and stepmother that she's really successful and she ends up placing top 10 in a portrait competition that would win her $10,000 which is huge, a big break for her. However, she gets brain surgery and develops a brain injury post-surgery where she can't recognize faces and obviously as a face portrait artist she needs to be able to recognize the faces so you follow her storyline of figuring out how she's going to draw this portrait and her crushes and her dynamics with her family and how her mom was also a portrait artist it's just such a good book i loved it so much i love sadie like she's so sweet and just such an enjoyable character i love her little crushes how she talks about boys i think the character's around 28 years old but the way she talks about boys is just so relatable in your 20s and i absolutely loved it i think everyone should read this book if you want a light-hearted romance. I would say there is no spice in this. It's closed door romance so you get one almost glimpse into a spice scene but it's so mild and they don't go into it at all. Thank you Catherine. And yeah, five star read and action. I finished editing this video on my trip with Haley so I thought to end the video I would share my ratings of her five star reads to the face herself. I'm excited <laughs> in the order that I read. The seven year slip, 4.5. Really close. I was gonna say 4.75. Okay, 4.5. That's amazing. Better than the movies. Mm, I'm scared. Wait, I'm scared. I'm scared. I feel like it's gonna be low. Oh crap. It's a five star. No way! It's not <laughs> yes! I didn't expect it. But I, I think about it all the time. No way. I literally can't wait. I cannot wait for October when the next no sequel way. comes out. That's amazing to hear because I want to reread it before the sequel comes out and I always get scared to reread books that in my brain I'm like this is one of my favorite books ever because yeah. what if it just doesn't live up to it so this is good. Okay, don't you feel like that book, like Wes's character is so rare for romance books? Yes, no, but he's my favorite book boyfriend. He's because so he's precious. our boyfriend. Yes! It's like they're just nice, sweet men and it's like why does that not exist in romance books? Oh my gosh. The way I am describing Wes is how everyone should describe their exactly. boyfriend. Dependable, loyal, he's the only one showing up for her. Like why is that the rarity? It exactly. sends me that that's the rarity. It's tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Oh gosh, I have no idea what you'll think. 3.75. Okay, so wow. still high-ish. <laughs> okay. I really battled with what to oh, wow. what to rate this mm -hmm. because of how well written it was. Yeah. There's so much going on in it. Yeah. And I felt like I was reading for seven years, but then it really went by fast. But I think overall there wasn't like you go from age basically 12 to like 40, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of growth in their character as individuals. That is so true, actually. Like, maybe that's real life, too, right. and you don't expect yourself to grow so, so I don't know, but I feel like I didn't see character growth, and you're following from the so past, true. present, future. The future becomes the present as you're reading, yeah. and I just felt like they weren't growing. Maybe it's about how people are stuck in cycles. That's kind of... I feel like it kind of is about yeah, that. Yeah, it honestly probably is about that. Because what book... It, the book doesn't follow any normal structure. Yeah. There's not even character development. Yeah. It's just more stuff happens to them and they react to it the same exact way every single time. That's actually so true. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got like frustrated. I'm like, how is this 30 years in one book and they're the same selfish people? <laughs> yeah. I really did enjoy it, so that's why I have a hard time rating it. And they're making it into a movie and I'm excited to watch the movie. Wait, really? Yeah, it got the no rights to make it a movie were released and she's gonna... Gabrielle is uh -huh. gonna write the screenplay, apparently. <gasps> According to Google. That's gonna be your second movie. Really? You have to read Story Life of AJ Fickery. Oh, because it's a movie. Yes. Yeah, I'll do that one then. And that one's way shorter. Okay, last one was Hello Stranger. Okay. By Catherine Center. Ooh, let me guess, let me guess. 4.25. Five. <gasps> no way! I had the same feeling as <laughs> We're best. <laughs> I had the same feeling so as better than the movies. Two out of four were five stars, as yeah. you said. So I will continue to go to Haley Fan for my book Rex. Yay! Thanks for Wait, watching. That's cookies. so exciting. Subscribe for more book videos and comment down below what the next book video Bree should make is. Yes! <laughs>